I'm Beulah. I'm 72 years old. I was a housewife and I've raised two sons. David is my oldest son. And nine years later, I had Stephen. When the kids were young, um, I was uh, what I would call normal. I did the laundry and we cooked meals. But I've never really been real fond of housework. <laughs> it, uh, it's not my big thing. I'm David, and I'm 53 years old, and I am Vila's son. My mom's house is deplorable. It's just filled from the floor to the ceiling. There's cat feces everywhere. The stench is will make you gag the second you walk into it. It's just sickening to your stomach to think that she's capable of living in those conditions. Truthfully, as long as I'm able to, to function in there, whether or not the living room is crowded, shouldn't really bother the city. I'm Stevie, I'm 44, and I'm Beulah's son. I hate it that she lives in a really horrible situation. It's overwhelmed with cats, and she hurt her arm a couple years ago when she took a bad fall and shattered her elbow, and, and it's hindered her in being able to take care of herself and the cats. I'm Sonny, I'm 70 years old, and I'm Vila's brother. If you say you love an animal and you have one or two, you hold them, you pet them, you have a relationship with them. When you have 20 of them in there and they're crawling all over everything, I don't see how you can have a relationship with that many cats. I just don't see it. You'd have to be a cat lover to understand it. They're on your lap. They're on your leg. I've got a recliner, so they start at my ankles and they work themselves up. And then there'll be somebody here, and then, and then one of them will want to get under your chin. As far as the cats suffering right now, I don't think so. They all seem to be doing fine. I've been trying for years to get her to stop doing the things that she does. Well, Sonny is critical. Sonny, on a good day, is always wants to kind of tell you what to do. Uh. Her cats and her buying is her whole life. OK. Home away from home. I could go to Goodwill every day of the week, and every day of the week, there's it's different. I'm not quivering, but this is one I've never seen before. She's always looking for that bargain. That's kind of interesting. If she finds the bargain, that's her high. I don't know. Let me. Um, it's the chase. It's it's the going and the anticipation of finding it. This is where I find the things for the kids. And then she tries to, oh, I found this for you. Let me give this to you. I've already got a couple. Uh, would you like it? That's where I have trouble, because I'm trying to do something nice, and it's rejected. It's like a slap in the face. After so many times of her giving something to you that you don't want, didn't ask for, don't need, then that's where the problem, as far as the relationships go. My relationship with David is strained to a degree that I feel like I guess he loves me, but I don't think he understands me at all. If my mom was to refuse the house being cleaned up, I, I suppose she'll have to go live in a motel because uh, she would not be welcome to come live with me. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Matt Paxton. I'm an extreme cleaning specialist. We have a lot of work to do. But before we even get started, we've got to get all the cats out of the house. OK. This is going to be a totally different cleanup than we're used to. You've got two factors. You've got infectious waste, and you've got a bunch of cats. You've got our animal handlers here, and they're going to walk us through what we're going to do. I'm Heather Ferguson. I'm with Animal Protection of New Mexico. 
This is Dr. Patricia Fieser. She is a forensic veterinarian who will be doing the assessments today. And this is investigator Robin Gojkovic. We're going to go room by room and we're going to make sure that we very carefully and compassionately remove each cat from your home so that it can be assessed by a veterinarian. Are you comfortable with our team? You know that we're yeah. going gonna to trust and do everything we can to make sure your cats are well taken care of. Okay. All right, let's do it. Okay. This is the worst word I've ever seen. Have you seen anything worse than this? No, I've never seen nope. anything. Nope. It's unbelievable. There's not a single clean surface in this house. This is a bad one. We even have to have a decontamination station for the first time ever. I mean, we're just going to have to be really, really safe. He's blind. He can't see what he's stepping on. We're going to get him treated right away. Oh, guys, there's a whole bunch of them in here. I'm going to really sick one sitting here on the chair. Okay. Yeah, he's in real bad shape, though. I think that this little guy is going to be our next urgent care. He's definitely not doing well. Normally, cats will run and hide when strangers come into the home. These cats were so ill that they really didn't move. They just sat right exactly where they were. And you can see how he's got that eye is, is has a lot of mucus in there and is half closed. So we immediately got them um, caged and brought them out for a triage with the veterinarian. Hi, gorgeous. Let's load these guys in the air-conditioned van. Yeah, I got some live kittens. We were in the back bedroom and we heard noises. When we lifted the mattress, what we found was a mama and six newborn kittens. They are probably less than a day old. The only way those kittens were going to survive the next 24 hours is that fact that we found them. When we are able to save a life and we are able to get an animal out of a situation before they get sick, it doesn't get any better than that. Hey, sweet peas. Man. That's its guts. That's its guts. Ugh. This house, man, it just gets worse and worse. Let me get a bucket. You know, you see this and you just want to get angry and you can't get angry. This, this is a pile of sadness. Excuse me. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. God darn it. I want to see that. I'm sorry. What's going on, Bueller? This, I want those. I'm sorry. We're going to have class right now. That's fine, but this is all trash. It's not either. This is all contaminated. No, it's not. Yes, it is. This is unhealthy. It has to be burned. I can't even throw this. I'm not allowed to throw this at the dump. This has to go be fired up and burned. She's a professional hoarder. She's awesome at this. She can avoid and deny anything. So you have to get very direct. This is a fact. It's a medical fact that this stuff is contaminated. It's bullshit. Eula. I'm the sorry. Cats are dying in that house because Oh, they're so not unhealthy. dying. I'm not dead. I got There's a bag of dead cats. Already. These are porcelain plates. They could be washed. Well, uh, if it's in the house, it's contaminated. Well, then, Anything on the why front don't we just set fire to the damn house? Pull up the carpet. The carpet needs to go. How You're the hell the... am I going to get to your carpet? There's 400 bags of this sh on top of it. There's not a damn thing wrong. They could be taken out of bath. They could be washed. Like... You don't have to wash them. I'll wash them. This is why I said to you, things that you want are going to get thrown away. F you. Go ahead and take it. You know what? But... You I right you, now, Sheila, right now, you better respect Mom. me. Mom. You hear me? That is not Sheila. what I was promised. Mom. Just leave me alone. Well, leave, leave me alone, Sonny. Hold on. 
I am Dr. Chabot. I'm a clinical psychologist who specializes in OCD and compulsive hoarding. You're in a position now that if this place, we don't address this place right now, you're probably going to just be pulled out of your house. I don't give a damn. But I don't want my entire life ripped out and put in a garbage bag when it doesn't have to be. It's, it's not, it's not, it sucks. It's it not sucks. garbage. Okay, Mom. And, and, and <laughs> Oh, no, it's we not have to garbage. let them help you, Mom, because if they she's don't... All right, Steve. <laughs> Her hair coat's a little sparse. I did see fleas on her. So far, the veterinarians that have done their assessment do believe that most of these cats are going to be adoptable, although they will require medical treatment. We have a lot of deadlines today. We lose our cleaning help at 3 o'clock and then we have an inspector coming at four. So we basically, we have six hours to get whatever we can get done, done. Can't hear you poop, man. Go down to the business now. Trying to get a free breath of air, man. This is very overwhelming. Just horrible. Can't hardly stand the smell of it. Today, at least, uh Three or four of the rooms have been cleaned out and they are clutter free, box free. They're still filthy. It's been a tough week, emotional week. Kind of uh, disappointed if not more was done. I've inspected your house and good news and some bad. We still have some unsafe conditions with the animal feces and uh, some unsafe material inside that has to be removed. Okay. The good news is the structure is good and sound. The floor assembly is good. Uh, I don't see any evidence of water damage, uh, but I still have to condemn the property and not allow you to live in. This is a very painful situation for people who love her. Some have given up. At this time, uh, I believe she's going to probably end up in a shelter for the local women's shelter. There's just been too much animosity right now that I don't want her to come to my house. Some try to get closer. Well, I try my best to be there for my mother. I'll do what I can to keep her alive for many years to come. Thank you. But nobody can fix her. I'm not sure whether she's willing to admit that she has a problem. But she is a long way from getting well. I have no sense that she is really going to recover from this illness of compulsive hoarding. I'm Linda. I'm a landlady and a farmer. I have an inherent passion to be who I am, and I usually do whatever I do big time. I inherited this farm. That's a big blessing. I was the garbage lady, and now I'm landowner.
I'm Angela, and Linda is my best friend and my rock. Well, she was the bag lady because she would go and pick up everybody's garbage because she didn't want it laying around and being ridiculous. My saving increased when I inherited this farm, and I could see that I could use these things here. There is lumber, there is hardware, there are doors, there are toilets, there are sinks. You name it, it's there. I think God is working through me. The religious beliefs really do play a lot in everything that she does. I feel like I'm a chosen one. I'm Dean. I work at the farms. My friend Linda is the owner, and I love her very much. Oh, the property is a mess. If you go up on the hillside and you come rolling down that hill, it looks like shh, shh, shh. I'm like a squirrel collecting my nuts for the winter, but I'm collecting them for the future, which doesn't look to be most bright. I believe in reading revelations that, you know, the end times are just going to be nasty. Social unrest, rioting, pillaging, plundering. Throw in maybe a few natural disasters along the way, like all the super volcanoes will go off at once. Armageddon kind of deal. The finance markets are going to crash. There's going to be nothing. No grocery stores, no hardware stores, no dry cleaners. If you want a nut or a bolt, you better have it. Anything that you might need or want, I'm sure can be found on that property. I would imagine if there's an emergency, people come knocking at my door. So that's what I'm all about here on this farm, trying to gather all the resources I can while the gathering is good. Dean and Angela had been working in the barn. I had put all of her stuff away for the winter. He was re refinishing some wood. He went to have lunch. I went in the house and I was going to get some loving, and I looked out and poof. I believe it was spontaneous combustion rags that uh, imploded. Millions of dollars worth of items destroyed in that fire. You know, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. He gave me this farm and he took away the barn. My issues with the health department came to a head. They told me I needed to get rid of everything. And when I asked to talk to them about it, they said, we don't need to talk with you. You just need to get rid of everything. Just totally insane situation where if it's not undercover, then we're taking it. With property the way it is and the value of the place, there are, are many farmers out there that would really like to get her to stumble and swoop in. She needs to clean up her mess. She needs to get the trash out of there. I believe that if the health department decided to come in and really attack her, that she could lose the farm. I've experienced my local government as a real form of terrorism, and I'm sick of it. Good morning, Linda. Hi. My name's Corey Chalmers. I'm an extreme cleaner that specializes in biohazard and hoarding. Linda really believes the end of the world is coming, and she's going to be the place to go for whatever anyone needs. I'm excited about getting some work done that I need to have done, particularly because the barn burned down. She's already had one barn that's burned down on her property. She could have the same thing happen to her house very easily. My concern after looking at this property is that danger is real still. Would you agree with that? No, I don't have any fire fear. That's exactly what okay, I'm talking well, about. Okay, well, you have the worry and the anxiety, OK? Like I said, all we can do is point out our concerns. I know. I've heard that over and over again, yeah. so I really don't want to hear it again. So we're only in the morning meeting, and Linda's already being resistant. This is going to be a tough one, I can already tell. Why do you need this stuff, just so I know? Like, that bag right there that's falling apart, and there's 
I don't even know what's in it. Well, this, I think this is a scrap uh, insulation, and sometimes I just need little itty bitty pieces of insulation to stick in a little crack. What about old broken wood like this? Particle board. This kind of wood I take into the house and I burn it. What about this? Old basketball hoop. What would we do with that? I don't know. I think this is a good uh, piece of metal that can be used. Everything I ask her about on this property, she has an answer for it. She's going to fix it, sell it. There's no way. I can look around and see a bunch of these things. This table right here. That I really don't want to be subjecting myself to your standard. It's about cleanup and organization and saving. I deal with a disorder known as hoarding. You can agree that this is a hoarding problem or not, but that's my job. I don't job. look at hoarding as a problem. I look at it as a virtue. Mm -hmm. She loves being a hoarder. She'll admit it. How am I going to justify taking stuff away from someone that sees value in being a hoarder? We can't help with the crisis of the county coming in and, and mandating that you do it then. Or we can't help another fire starting and burning down another barn. I don't live my life thinking about peril and danger and what if and what if and 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 if I'm really not here to talk about fire and safety. Excuse me, I'm leaving. All right. You know, sorry, this is not working for me. This is not how I want to spend my hours and my morning. Why is it bad when people care about her? I, I can just consider mostly both and you're wasting my time. I'm just trying to help her understand that she's in danger. I actually really wished you weren't here. Thank you. The problem is this is a hazard. I mean, this is, I mean, for all of her environmental consciousness, she is contaminating soil. Give me about soil. 10 minutes. I'll be back. Where are you off to, Dean? I'm going to go talk to Linda. Hey, Dean, why don't well, you hold up? Yet. Hold up. Hold not up. Yet. You guys are going to get her, and she's going to have a migraine and have a heart attack or some uh, I'll, I'll be back in 10 minutes. This is the problem. Yeah. If, if we do this not as a united front yeah. and with a, with a systemic plan or something. What, what's, what's going on with you through this process? What's going on with Dean? I don't know if there's brainwashing here. They're just afraid of her for some reason, and we really need to figure this out. Let's have a little talk, OK? The whole thing was about safety and safety and safety. I love you, and I think you're badass. But this has a bunch of We're talking about working. They're supposed to come out me and supporting me. That they're just putting up roadblocks to, so that they can't handle it. You've got these people who have a vision of the world, and it is us against them. And for outsiders like me and Corey to come in, immediately everybody's defenses go up. She does have respect for you as a person. That, that's fine. I, to be honest, I, whether you, you should feel, care. Whether you feel respect or not is, is not doesn't change how my day goes. Those are really cold words. Well, I mean, that, 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 that's well, what's offensive. So. What I, what I will you can go ahead and go. Everybody either argues, denies, or storms off. All right. Yep. I don't know how we're going to accomplish anything under those circumstances. We've tried it our way, and yeah. obviously that's not going to yeah. work. So right. let's put you in charge at this point and tell these guys what you want. We're hoping that this little act of you're in charge will get some trust back with her. We're not about throwing out anything or discarding anything. It's not what it looks like. It's what can it be. Linda started describing her plan to the junk guys, to the organizers, and everyone was confused. What do you want us to do with the things that are not recyclable, that are not donatable, that? Yeah, I really don't want to, you to all get into qualifying what, you know, should this be well, safe, no, should it's, this it's, not be it's, safe? It's, it's, it's a Let's just organize the bar instead Linda, of the make it look calm good. calm down. Take it down a notch. It's OK. There's a lot of people trying to understand your it's method, just, which your method is not the norm for them. That's right. We're just filling up the space that we emptied yesterday. That's all we're doing right now is filling up the exact space that we emptied. I feel like I'm becoming just like Angela and Dean, becoming one of her minions moving stuff around. Angela, can I? Can we talk to you oh, away cool. from Linda, please? Yeah. This is stupid. I'm sorry, Angela. We're just moving stuff from pile to pile to pile. And then we're going to move it right back in. Tell me this doesn't make sense to you. It only makes sense because it makes sense to Linda. OK, thank you for saying that. You know, That's I mean, the problem that I have it, with doing this. It, it, it's not going to make sense to everybody. Angela, I know you don't want us to leave because we're helping you, but we're not helping her. This process that we're going through with nothing being thrown away is just enabling her. And if she's not careful, she is going to actually become just like Linda, because we already see it. You're becoming her. Do you hear yourself? 
You are I have, becoming I, her. I, I live here. I work for her. I, I, I'm, 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 you know. You're part of the problem. Well, sure I am. Oh, well then let's change that. You if know, you know it, you're part of the problem, let's fix but it. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. You're beholden to her. Angela is a puzzle. Sometimes Angela sounds like she recognizes there's a problem here. But as soon as she starts down that path, she flips and she becomes Linda's yes man. Angela has definitely drunk the Kool-Aid here. Yeah, this is what I've taken off of the floor of the barn. There was a little spark. I thought maybe we could build off of and start cleaning again. So that's exactly what we did. We called everyone back and started to go through piles. That's progress. <laughs> Better get my gloves back on. Are we friends again? Oh, nice. Wherever okay. you think you can put something else in here, I'll go. I'll follow you to the moon and back. Uh, that could go. To trash? The yeah, trash. Trash. Thank you. Let's talk about this, because these were jeans at one time, but there's nothing left of these pants. Yeah, there is. There's a zipper. I take the zippers off. I mean, if you're going to sit there and shred up a pair of pants and save the zipper, save the snap, because someday there's not going to be zippers and snaps, like, how do I even reason with that? You think people are desperate, and I don't think they're going to be this desperate. I'll have to ignore you for a while so we can get the job done. What are we going to do with these bags that are full of stuff? Where do yeah, they go? Yeah, just don't where harass do these bags go? me anymore. Could you where just do these be bags quiet? Go? No, I mean, where do these bags know, go? Really? If I have to be harassed, I'm not even going to be out here doing this. That's kind of childish. Um, you could stay there and be childish yourself. My 10-year-old does but this. But how degrading and insulting you can be. OK. It's too bad you have the, that quality to be just degradating. There's just no reasoning with Linda. She's fight or flight all the time. So if you don't agree with her 100%, she fights you. And when she can't fight, she runs. I'll meet you guys up top. This is an epic fail. We didn't help Linda. There's two outcomes to Linda's story. She dies in the horde, or the city or county comes and takes it away from her. Neither one's good. So sooner or later, she's going to have to address this. There's a high level of victim mentality on this property. I just know when we leave, she's going to be able to sit here in the midst of all this stuff with the perverse satisfaction that she's been screwed over yet again. Surely for the greater good than to your trucks to go off with to waste. I'm trying the best I can. Hang on a minute. OK. Huh? It's all right. I'm Leah. I've been married to my husband, Ken, for 54 years. We have three grown sons. And we're all just overwhelmed by the condition of our house. I come through the front door. That's our entrance hall. Off to the right is a breakfast room, but it's stacked up, obliterating the doorway. We can't get in and use it. Turn to the left, and we walk through about half of the living room and then make a sharp right again over into the dining room, which heads into the kitchen. And off of the kitchen, there's a hallway that leads to uh, the two bedrooms and the bathroom at the back end of the hall. I'm Ken, and I'm Leah's husband. <laughs> On the left and the right are just piles and piles and piles stacked up six to seven feet tall of all kinds of stuff that Leah has purchased and piled. Some of it's um, usable stuff and some is junk.
when I get tired of cleaning up or straightening or sorting, uh, I just sit on the bed. One of the things I've collected a lot of is yarn. So I've started making afghans, which takes up quite a bit of yarn. Then I watch TV while I'm doing my yarn crafts. Amongst the things that I like to collect, besides just the craft items, is dachshund items. Almost anything red, white, and blue. Just part of my upbringing to be proud and uh, of your country and respect it. It's mostly just stuff that I thought I would make use of and then didn't have an immediate use, so they got put in a pile, and then eventually something else got put on top of it. Then I forgot about having what was underneath and I couldn't get to it. So lots of times then I bought some more. I'm Dr. Robin Zazio. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, and I specialize in helping people who are struggling with hoarding behaviors. Heard you were coming. Yes. Is it okay if I come in? Sure, come Okay. On. Leah opens the door, and I'm immediately struck by the amount of stuff. I'm thinking this is a miracle that there's been no fire and that no one has died in this hoard. Walking in here, there's one word that comes to mind and... Um, a mess. Well, it's, it's actually quite remarkable, but I'm curious, when you're out shopping, are you thinking about where you could use it or how you could use it? Because there's really no usable space in this house. I try to only buy what I can have a place for and make use of. Mm-hmm. And so let's talk about that in terms of making use of. There is, this room goes probably at least six feet back. So when we buy things, typically we think, okay, I'm gonna buy this because I can use it. I have an idea where I'm gonna put it, that sort of thing. But all that stuff that is behind this wall right now, you don't have access to, right? right? And so it really isn't usable stuff. She's thinking, I have a place for this, but there was no point at which Leah began to realize that, wait, I already have five of these, or wait, I already have a hoard in my house, I need to stop. And that's one of the hallmarks of hoarding disorder, is they lose that insight. <sighs> what does all this stuff mean to you? know much of anything right now. Is all of this stuff filling a void of any kind for you? Oh, I had one friend tell me one time she thought I collected things because I didn't have many friends and I could count on the things. Hmm. Which there might be some truth to it. Did you used to have friends and then they just kind of... I've never been one to have many friends. And why is that? Hmm. Is it something that you want? I wouldn't know, because I've never hmm. had a bunch of them. OK. And so one of the things that we're going to do a lot of work on is what we call reframing and looking at things differently. <sighs> because you want to be happy with what you have, but at the same time, everything that you have is, is really making you very unhappy. In some ways, but, you know, it's not a, an immediate concern, so it got shoved to the back burner. First day of the cleanup, and Leah's gonna set the pace. We're gonna have a morning meeting and just see how she's doing. Then we're gonna get started. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Leah, this is a big day for you. How are you feeling? 
Leah, you doing all right? How are you feeling yeah, today? I'm okay. Leah's body language is speaking volumes. Her eyes are closed, she's got her fist on her cheek, and she will not make any eye contact. Ken, how are you feeling? I'm pretty good. Yeah? I'm hoping that uh, four days from now or whenever, I can be in the house and look around and say, wow, this is great. Yes. <laughs> OK. All right. That's the attitude we're looking yes. for. We're going to get our supplies, Leah, and I will meet you back at the front door, OK? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get started. Great. Grab a box. Let's try not to avalanche everything in there as best you can. Try to work from the top. What you want to be thinking about is what do you and Ken need? Leah, anything that you want to keep in there? Wide mouth bottles. Wide mouth bottles? Yeah, like that one and this one, because you can put ice cubes down in them when, when I carry water with them. You want to put ice cubes? in this to drink. By the end of this whole process, you'll probably have more of these that you've drank and out of. So can we agree that anything that comes out of the house can go with respect? No. I want to keep at least six of them, the wide mouth ones. OK. Oh, that's a brick. Well, that's half should of a go brick. in our brick pile outside. Uh, you want to keep a broken brick? Yes. I'm frustrated. I'm bothered. I'm upset. She's got to change her way of thinking so that we can get some real progress and make their house livable again. Because this is this is unsustainable. Look at the freezer. We, we have to address this. I know you don't believe in expiration dates, so I guess what we're saying is you want to keep all this? I don't know, but I don't want to take time right now with you guys here to do that. We've got insects in there. We've got a lot of mold. I want to be really clear that you are intending to go through this to see yes. if there's any good usable yes. food. Yes. It's destroyed. Everything's decomposing. It's, it's decomposing and it's contaminated. You are a nurse. How come you don't see the dangers in this stuff? Why would you want to go through this? Tell me one thing you would want to keep in there. The nutmegs. Where? Right there. Why do you want to keep this? I use nutmeg all the time from Thanksgiving through the winter. You haven't used this in how many years? So it's how do you know sealed, it's not, not moldy. Mom is wanting to keep some of the food and some of the containers that's in that freezer. It's mind boggling. I, I honestly, I'm a little concerned. Is that the beginning of dementia creeping in? That kind of disconnect for self care is. Let's get Ken in here. Let's get right, your dad I'll, in here. I'll get him. Hey, Ken. I have brought her in to show her the freezer. And she insists that even though this freezer doesn't work, she is insisting on keeping this. She said she wants to keep this? Yes. She said, do not touch my freezer. I want to keep the food. I want to clean the food. I want to keep what food I can. And I want to keep all the containers that are in there, as well as the blue ice packs. Well, I'm sorry. She's worse off than I thought. Yes. Yes. So if she wants to keep this. Ooh, stinks. OK, if she wants to keep that, then you can now see why she's having so much trouble with all the other stuff. Yeah, how that is valuable to her is incomprehensible. <laughs> no kidding. The way we operate is we don't get rid of things without somebody's permission. But this is half your food, half your freezer. Do you give permission for Corey's team to get rid of this? 
Yes. Okay. So if you could please tell Leah that you have made an executive decision, the freezer is going, and then Corey and his team can make it happen. Lay down the law there, Ken. So the cleaners have just arrived. They're gonna start cleaning the areas of the house that we were able to declutter. Hopefully they can get to some more by the time we get done with other rooms. The mad rush where the cleaners are doing their job. We have some staging going on. We've now finished everything, and we're gonna bring the family in to see the newly decluttered home. Hello, family. What do you think? Oh, it's wonderful. Is this a kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Leah? How are you feeling? Give us one positive. There's lots of room. Okay. Yay! Yay. And, and, and you, you got, got your walker, walker in here. Walker in yep. here. <laughs> Come on in, Leah. Wow. wow. <laughs> so a little different in here, too, Leah. I haven't seen any of this furniture for years. <laughs> no. I've never Very seen nice. this part of the floor ever in my ever, entire life. Ever. Well, you did when you were tiny, but... <laughs> That's where your crib yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was in a crib right there. And what do you think of the bed you're sitting on? You don't have to crawl over each other to get in and out anymore. It's got to be moved this way so he can get in on the other side. Well, he can. There's plenty of room. If he could get in before, he can get in now. <laughs> Let's be serious. <laughs> he just doesn't need a trapeze to do it. I can't tell you how relieved we are that they now have a safe place to live. Mom played hardball, but in the end, we got what we needed to get done. She did good. Very proud of her. I do appreciate everybody's help. Thank you, Thank Leah. Thank you. That means a lot. It, it does. does. It does mean a lot. All of you can now spend time in this newly decluttered home. Enjoy, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Oh. I'm Kate. I'm a former realtor. I'm a mother of four. And I love collecting things that have meaning or connection to me. I love my antique wardrobes, crystal china, linen, glassware, silver. The hallway's lined with boxes. The living room is got boxes you can barely walk in. They're stacked up boxes by the front door. I use the side door to get into the house because it's clearer entrance. It's a storage building, basically the house at this point. I'm Andrew, I'm Kate's middle son. Currently the house is 100% not livable. It is covered from wall to wall, about head height to me, in furniture, random things, knickknacks. It's completely unlivable. I'm Steven. I'm Kate's youngest son. Mom recently started living in the basement. 
I worry about the moisture. It's musty, it's moldy. It's like there's no air to breathe. I feel more protected, hidden there. I feel like it's my safe place. I could not imagine spending a night there. I couldn't imagine having hope for the future in that sort of environment. I'm Eva, and I'm Kate's daughter. So I haven't been into the house in a few years. Last time I came into town, I drove up to the driveway, and I noticed that there were things piled up out to basically right to the brim of the driveway. And so that was immediately alarming. My mom really identifies with possession, and I think like property is one of her favorite words. It gives her some feeling of status and worth to be able to have things. Took a while before I wanted to get married again. But he was such a gentleman, patient, and he was easy to fall in love with. Herb was a chemical engineer. He was very meticulous. And when they met, he had this very minimal house that had nothing in it. And so the two of them together were like total opposites. Herb was incredibly supportive. All he wanted was her to be happy. We appreciated him for that. But at the same time, he wasn't able to say no to new things being brought into the house and the effect that it would have over time. He was solely responsible in carrying the weight of keeping tabs on mom and having to fight with her over having a livable space. As her kids, we were kind of blind and unaware just how dire their financial situation had gotten as sort of a result of overspending. And we were able to live a solid, I don't know, about 10 years without having the weight of this on us because he managed it. I'm incredibly grateful that he did that, and I can't imagine how much pressure it was. There is no way that that amount of stress wasn't in some way impacting his health. <laughs> this is the love of my life. When I first walked up to the house after Herb had passed, I hadn't really seen it in a while. When I saw it, it struck me right through the heart, and I didn't know how to process it. I don't know what to do after that, because I can't keep driving by wondering if my mom is covered and buried and suffocating in their basement under a bunch of stuff. That's unacceptable. I don't know what I'd do. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Brandon Brownon, transition expert and cleanup expert. We are here to, to do this big project today for Kate. This project is going to take a lot out of everyone. We have the family here today to support. The mission today, we're going to tackle the driveway, working our way on the deck to gain entry into the home. If anything is moving too quick, please let us know. This is all going to depend on you, Kate, giving us the ability, authorizing us to be able to make those decisions and move eff effectively is going to be crucial. So now that we've covered all the bases, why don't we get going, guys? All right. Let's do it. I'm Dr. David Tolan. I'm a clinical psychologist, and I specialize in the study and treatment of hoarding disorder. OK. So Kate, this is the stuff that needs to get dealt with first, because obviously this is blocking okay. the entrance to everything. So I'd like you to kind of go through and tell me if there's anything here that you really feel needs to be saved, or whether this could all come out. 
Pull, let's pull up and see. You want to pull up and take a look? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Looks like we got some cardboard boxes. There's water yeah. coming. And uh, a chair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's the color it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's, they can go. They, they can, can go. go. OK, great. How was that to, to make the decision to it, let them go? It's easy. It's that's easy. easy. So OK. Guys, let's, let's and what made it easy for you? They're dirty. They're dirty. <laughs> OK. So that maybe that's a rule and of that thumb that we can look at. If something's, well. OK, so if something is dirty and if it doesn't function well, they can it's go? Gone. OK, excellent. I think it's old and gone. Gone. So, Kate, this is a piece that you had said you wanted to look at before yeah. we make a decision about it. So now that we've gotten to it and you have a chance to see it, what do you think about it? We find this massive cabinet. It's very large. It's very damaged. And yet, she is saying it was special, somebody made it for her. Are you just hanging on to it for kind of sentimental reasons? Yeah, it's just the people who made it and did it for me. And, I know. And it's solid. I know. I'm learning where her blind spots are. One of her blind spots is things that have potential. You know, this could be used by somebody. Another one that I'm learning now is things that it would be a shame to put into a landfill. Everything is going to the dump. I thought there was going to be more recycling stuff, mm -hmm. and there's not. Yeah. So it's discouraging, yeah. and it's shame. It's shame. You know, her use of the word shame is interesting to me. I don't know if that really means I would feel shame if I let go of this. What I suspect is happening is that fundamentally she doesn't want to let go of things, and she's finding justifications to hang on to those things that may or may not make sense. You kind of hang on to things because it's a shame for it to go into a landfill. Yeah. But I'm looking at this, and it seems very large and very damaged. Is. You know, if somebody were into reclaiming old furniture, they would find it in the landfill. They would go get it. I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I hear, and you know, one person would paint it, one person would oil it, mm -hmm. dark oil. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's too big for a small house. It is. Yeah, it is. It is. Let go. OK, there you it's go. It's a shame. I wish nice somebody job. would take yeah. it. Hey, one of the kids. <laughs> I think we're going to see some fireworks tomorrow. This was the easy stuff, the stuff that she was willing to let sit out in the rain, because she didn't care about it that much. But the things inside the house, well, that she cares about. Today, we have a new mission is to tackle the inside of the home. Finish up the bedrooms, get the kitchen going, get the dining room complete. We had a good start yesterday, as you can see. This took a family that cares about you to get to this point. Well, you know, I'm really curious, Kate, to get a sense of how you feel when you look around this space now. It does feel good. And to have so much support and family and people coming from different places, I get tingles because there's a lot of great energy and love. Absolutely. Well, your family's here because they love you and they want to support you. Now, as I think about today, we're going to get into a couple of rooms that I think might be even more meaningful to you. How about when we get into the bedroom? What's going to happen there? I haven't been in that in a long time. That has been kind of the center of your avoidance, I think, hasn't it? I mean, you've just shut it's that off. It's too hard, yeah. So in yeah. the spirit of what we've been talking about, right, today we're not going to avoid. Yeah. Today we're going to approach. And that's going to stir up some feelings for you. And that's OK. You know, that's perfectly normal. Is there anything else here that you can see that might be something you could let go of. I like it. I was hoping to see sets of chairs yeah. that are alike. So what about this wicker chair? Can we get rid of that chair? Hey, Eva. Hey. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's just pause here, and I'd like to kind of check in with, with Eva. Eva, what do you think about all the stuff that's here? These hey. were things from outside yesterday. 
I know, and they were covered. So you gotta let go. I know it's hard, but you have to let go. Steven I, doesn't have the time to fix things. I'm not asking anyone to fix things. I do want to have my choices and pick the, my favorites. I, I, I really, I, I want to make my own choices. I really yep. do, and I Which am not going to go overboard. But at the same time, remember, a big piece of what we're trying to do is get you to learn how to not have this problem anymore. And the best way to learn how to not have this problem anymore is to actually go through the process and talk it through and make the, the really hard decisions and cope with the emotions that that brings up. There's going to be can we some talk, grief. Can we talk a little bit about these doors, that window? How, how does that play a role with reconstructing things here? What do we need to build out of that? We're not building homes. If you could show houses. me something in this house that you have had repaired. I, we had things repaired constantly. What are you talking about? Can you find something house? around you that's been repaired? I, you know what? I, I'm not comfortable with this. We're here stretching our comfort zone pretty maximally. It's important to recognize, Kate, that what you're comfortable with led to the problem. Right. So we're going to have to have some discomfort here. A more simple way of saying that is, I want you to do what feels bad. What are you feeling right now, Kate? Like, I have no choice. I mean, it's like, I either play nice to, and not, not be true to myself. I'm an adult, I get to make my own decisions. Of course. And I've made hard decisions, and I don't like being pressured. I know you've there made a lot. There has to be an acknowledgement. This is a freaking There's huge. Massive acknowledgement. Massive, massive acknowledgement. Okay. We've stayed sort of in your comfort zone, though, you know? Yeah, we're getting down to the real antique stuff. We're getting stuff down to the, the real stuff. stuff and I feel like I could run through this real quick, logically, and help you make decisions. If it's broken, if the top's worn off, it's done. Good, good, good. Rest needs to go. There's a top for this piece somewhere. There's a somewhere? Top. Here. Here. That and the other one had a top that went for it. Hey, guys, let's bring it back right, in right, one more time. Bring it back in. Bring so, it back so, in. Here, so here's the thing. Can we agree to get rid of everything, that moldy chair, everything else, with the exception of those doors? The unused rack I would use in a pantry, that, and it's not even out of the box. OK. That is the one thing I'd want. But everything else? Everything else? Not this. This is what I put together to save. And it has a top. You can see where it, there's a, so we got four, there's we, a top. So Kate, we have a total of five items. One, two. Three, four, and these two doors. And there's two French doors. How many doors are you keeping, Ma? What do you need those for? You got those doors. Eva, I'm, Eva I'm noticing your facial expression. Tell me what you're, what you're thinking right now. There's a really big disconnect between rational and emotional here. Yeah, I think and so. And I don't know I'm, how to resolve that. I, have, I want, I, I'm not asking for very much. I just don't think it's unreasonable. If we cannot get rid of this, then everything will come back. And you will be in the same place in two years. That's how fast it we'll happens. We'll see, we'll see. I, it, we won't, I won't. I, I've made it clear, I, I made it clear. I, I get to choose. And I want a little balcony with a couple chairs. And those French doors mean something to me. So I really want to stand on that. I really do. So what we need you to say is that everything else that you haven't already identified can go. And that's a, a Well, when I've said everything, us. then everything was wiped out. And I, so I'm We're not trusting. We're talking about this row. OK, that row, that row. And we so said we've, this we've mirror. Said every single thing that you've said, we've heard. OK. And uh -huh. we're trying to talk about the rest of your life. Not the things that could be something, the things that are something. Yeah, including us, you know? Like, I, this hurts on a deep level because you're putting a barrier between you and your family. So like, where's the happiness there, you know? We need some sacrifices from you. So what's going on? It's just hard. Yeah. So what are you responding to right now? The pressure. Mm -hmm. It feels like people are pressuring you. Well, and they are a bit. Oh, it just hits some buttons. Yes, yes, it will hit buttons. 
And to some extent, we need to hit those buttons. And I'm glad that you're not avoiding. You know, I'm glad that you're willing to experience these emotions and go through this process because we are trying to be different, you know, and that, that hurts sometimes. Can you feel from your family that all that challenging is coming from a place of love? Yes, I know. Yeah, they really care about you, and I think they're really worried about you. They're really worried that you're not functioning well. I worry about you, too. You know, I, I worry about the, the condition that this home was in, and I worry about you doing it again. It feels like poking, but I know they can see it from a different perspective. Yeah. I have enough. Mm-hmm. I have sufficient. Yeah, you do have enough. And I... I am so grateful for this opportunity, and I'm trying to not stop the progress. There's something there that, that I gotta work on. What do you think it is? Just uh, the angst with my daughter. It's really hard. I was... The two of you are just at odds. I get a sense she's really concerned. She is. I mean, and that comes from love. But I know she doesn't like seeing you live like this, and mm -hmm. it really bugs her. I know. That's why we're doing it. Yeah. Did we take Gerb's clothes out yet? I don't think they've even gotten into the master bedroom yet. I just think that'll be cathartic. To get rid of those. Yeah. It's hard to let go. And I guess in some ways you never really do let go. What would help you right now? What do you feel like you need to... I'm just gonna wash my face with cold water and start again. Okay. Sounds good. All right. The fact that Kate is willing to talk about how she's feeling talk about why she's feeling that way and think about things hopefully in a different way strikes me as a good sign. It's awful. I think I just have to feel it and go through it. I think that we're opening something up in Kate. There is insight there. Now she understands that her behavior has become a problem and it is a serious problem. It's the beginning of the day, and we have one last day to finish the final three things that need to be addressed. We have to get the basement done. We have to finish Kate's main bedroom. But the first thing we need to do is we need to have Kate do a final pass on the items in the front of the lawn that Kate hasn't quite made a decision on. All right, Kate, we're going to go through each section. We have to be very quick. What about this piece here? Right, go. All right. What about this chair here? That chair can go. It's sloppy. What about this mirror? It's plastic. So we can... I mean, it's the mirror's mirror, but I, I don't need it. So we can donate? Yep. All right, thank you. You're doing great, Kate. Yeah, thanks. It's garbage. OK, great. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I think I have enough mirrors. I can let go of a project. Great. All right. Today, I can see some real changes in Kate. It used to be that her reflex was to hang on to every single thing. You know what? I have ironing boards, don't I? <laughs> now I see her making a lot more critical decisions. Everything's going great. I'm excited. We're, we got a good pace. Andrew and Steven are working their way through the garage, working their way through the double doors to gain access into the basement. Ivana and Caitlin are working in Kate's main bedroom so that we can bring items to Kate, who's located underneath the tent. Well, table ain't got no lids. Don't. Then Molly Mays are cleaning the kitchen, the bathroom, most importantly, cleaning the basement floor that's full of mud. We're down to the final touches. actually be able to get this job done.
my gosh, it's so big. It's so big. Oh my. Just walking into feeling space. The dining room, living room, this so much bigger than I remember. Guys, this is gorgeous. Thank you. Ah, oh, feels cool down here. Kate, out of the entire process, the biggest challenge was down here. It was really, really dense but it was all trash. This all had been ruined because there was so much of it. I remember when you and I first came down to this room, we had to practice gymnastics just to get <laughs> I twirled into down. the room. You also slept down here. In fact, this was actually your sleeping area. So how do you feel about what you see now? Space. I am going to sleep so much better knowing that she is sleeping better and not in that dingy old basement anymore. Oh, here we are. This is an area for family. It's beautiful. It's not often that we're able to, to do an entire house. We did the entire house. Lucky girl. You are <laughs> very lucky. And that's it. because of these guys. You've got a really nice family here. This is a family with a lot of love who all came together to help you. And I think that the state of this house is a clear testament to their love for you and their willingness to support you. I think a lot of the success of this cleanup can be attributed to the solid family relationships that Kate has. They're smart enough to see what's going on and insightful enough to recognize what the problem is. And they're also big hearted and loving enough to want to do something about it. I think this is the part where Brandon and I leave you and. We leave you to enjoy the home. So it's been a pleasure to work with all of you. Thank you. you so it truly much. has been. I see the future as surprising my kids. That's my goal, is to have them shocked at what this has done for me and projecting the future. I'm going to surprise my family. I can do better. Carolyn, and I'm a home health care assistant. I am definitely a hoarder. There's no question about it. I've let it get completely out of hand. There's stuff in the hallways. There's stuff on the stairwells. There's stuff everywhere. I've been able to sleep in the smaller bedroom in the back but I have to climb over things in the hallway to come down to the bedroom. My name is Melissa, and Carolyn is my mom. There is about one path in her house from the doorway to the couch. And if you go anywhere else in the house, you have to climb over something. My name is Austin, and Melissa is my mom, and Carolyn is my grandma. Even though the living room is a mess, the kitchen just is insane. The stink is just horrible because there's rotten stuff just all over the place. Unfortunately, the way my mom gets most of her stuff is she steals it. I've caught her stealing stuff from us. Family members have caught her stealing stuff from them. Friends have caught her stealing stuff. We've caught her at the store stealing stuff. She just has to take things.
My name is Tim. Melissa is my wife, and Carolyn is my mother-in-law. One time we went into a restaurant and ate and we left. Well, Grandma had taken the bowl that they serve and put it inside the styrofoam pack. And she took it outside and Austin opened it up and Austin's like, <laughs> Grandma, this isn't your bowl. What are you doing with it? We kind of laugh about it. Otherwise, we'd probably cry. I was always a hoarder, but I think when my husband was alive, he kind of coached me to try and keep things up better. And if I couldn't do it, then he helped me. Once he was gone, I kind of gave up. I loved him very much, and I acquired a lot more things after he passed away because I felt like that kind of filled the void. My name is Mike, and Carolyn's my mom. My dad would have an answer for all this, I'm sure. And we just hold everything up and take it and junk it. I feel sad that my hoarding has caused so many problems in my family. You shouldn't have to watch your parents or your family members because you're afraid they're going to take something from your house. She's already violated our trust in taking things. At Thanksgiving, I told her, you're like cancer. I have to cut you out. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. Here's what I plan to accomplish. The whole house. Who thinks we can do it? I guess. All right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pretty squalid odor in the home. I can smell it from the curb when I walk up. We're starting in the kitchen because that is what I believe to be the most difficult place. Yes. Let's go in straight to the kitchen. Yes. I say the criteria is clear all this. Oh, wow. Is that great that your mother just says, oh yeah, get rid of oh, it all. Yeah. I am completely shocked at how good she's doing. You are throwing your stuff away. I understand. What's that like? It's what more are you important thinking? that I have a family. It's more important you have a family. She's not running away. I, it really is the first time that I've seen a hoarder get into the thick of it and work like crazy. What wow. great work you're doing. <laughs> and I am absolutely elated. Tell me how your mother did. Awesome. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> Yeah, Fremont, hi. This is my class ring from 20 years ago. I didn't think I'd ever find it again. You think your mom was hiding it and holding on to it because maybe she wanted the memories? I think she was. Ah, I would have given it to him years ago had I known it was there. When you tell me, I totally believe you. You might be safe keeping it and holding it because it's a great memory for your son or for yourself. But you know what? Your actions have trained them to think that you're keeping things. To keep it. To purpose. keep it. Because you either take it or keep it oh, because that's who you are. It's okay. Okay. That's, that's more of the <laughs> She lied. She flat out lied. She told me that she did not take my aunt's genealogy. And she flipping, it's right there. I'm Dr. David Cutts. I'm a psychologist, and I specialize in obsessive compulsive disorder. Carolyn took some genealogy papers from family members. You know, their religion, I believe they're Mormon. I think it was just a, of all things, to take sort of the ultimate insult. You lied to me. What did I say? You said you didn't have the genealogy. You never took the genealogy. You didn't have it. And that file folder that was there, that's what it was. I only have the genealogy that I'm supposed to have. You have the originals. Yeah, 
one thing. You steal from me. You steal from Mike. You steal from your brothers and sisters. I'm tired of it. I love you and I want you to get help. Don't you get that? I want you well, to you get, go get help. Get papers and let's look and see what they are. <sighs> just go get them. Let's just let's get the papers and look and see what they are. That's fine, but I was I explaining. I was explaining something else to you, and all you can care about is those damn papers. Okay. All right. I'll make the copies of them, and then I'll get the out of your eye. You can see exactly what it is. Right, right. And it's I the understand. The genealogy that right. they've been looking for. Right. There's some with holes punched in it right there, which tells me those are flipping originals. My mom took them and and it's because that's Let's see for just a sec. You do not get to touch them. You steal. Okay. You're a thief. This is what my mother sent me. No, this isn't. Your copies I've seen. When I you I was a little girl, they came in a manila or a class envelope. I have not left them in the class envelope. These are the things that I have had. I think, I mean, I think that this is something that in, in a few days, in a few weeks, can be something that can help you grow and help you move forward. But it is important to see how painful it is. Carolyn put it best that she feels like an onion that's being peeled and peeled, and now she's kind of at the part where it makes you cry. And I think that's the case for the whole family. I love you so much, and you don't show me. Good. I love you, too. <laughs> they need to let all the anger out. They need to yell at each other. They need to cry. They need to hug each other. I mean, all of that. Maybe in one more group hug with you guys, OK? We'll get in here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> OK, let's move on with this, OK? okay. Keep. This is throwaway. Oh, okay. This is a bag that's throwaway. Don't mix, no, don't mix it up and put good stuff in bags or else it'll get accidentally thrown out. It's going way too fast. Okay, do you want to just it's like, hold you know, up for a second? It's like, okay, well, you know, can I see this stuff? No, I can't see it. I, it's just going. Carolyn does have a lot of anxiety. I think she's controlling it a lot. Um, whether that's good or not, I think is debatable. You're okay. You're okay. If you need to stop and say stop for a minute, just say stop. If it's going too fast, just say we need to slow down. You gotta voice it or else they're not gonna know. I want you to stand right in here. All right. Find any soft stuff and throw it here. Okay. Keep bagging up the soft stuff. Fast, fast, fast. As fast as we can do it. You want to keep scissors or no? No. Throw it. Not salvageable. We're never going to get a girl, but. OK. Get rid of it then. I don't think that's worth no. saving to you. What do those look like on me? Not good? They make your hips a little wide. Too wide. Woo! Was I doing OK? No, you're doing fantastic. Oh. OK does not describe your work. Great job. OK, thank you. All right, Genealogy. Part of the blow up yesterday was because of some genealogy books and some originals. And today, another four or five more original books have popped up. We're going to take them and get copies of them. OK. That will be great. The originals of everything. And You're welcome to take them and we'll make copies of them. We'll make photograph albums of them. And good for me. I'm all good with it. OK. Love you, and I'm glad we're getting down to the real breast tax here. I think it's been kind of an eye-opener because she's been admitting that, yeah, 
I take things from you guys. I lie to you guys. And she's told me and my brother that she is sorry. It says, ask you yourself, what have I learned from my experience? <laughs> Appropriate card, wouldn't you say? <laughs> There is such a big difference for Carolyn from how she was yesterday to today. We're gonna throw these cans out. They're not gonna be any good. All right. Not you. <laughs> today, she was ringing a cowbell. She was playing. She was throwing stuff onto the truck. She has totally transformed her behavior. What about this? It can go. This can be thrown out. One, two, three, here we go. Get rid of it. Whoa. Wow. Isn't that cool? Ho oh, ho, look at that, guys. How's that look? Oh. <laughs> so do you, do you get that we cleared the clutter so that other things, Can human be beings, important. could actually fit in? Exactly. The best blessing I have is my family. Pretty soon you can come to my house and maybe even spend a night sometime with Grandma. How would that be? Yeah. Because yeah, I'd love that. All right. With the proper support from her family and from professionals and, and with the right frame of mind, I think she can do well. And she's taken the first step. I mean, without a doubt, I have to give her that credit. I've gained a better understanding of what I have done that has hurt her. And so, so I promise them that I will, will not take their things. I don't want the grandkids to have that problem. I don't want them to think, oh, Grandma just going to come and take something of ours. I don't want that ever to be a feeling. I don't want them to have that fear from me. I changed it around, I don't remember where I put it. My name is Darlene, and I'm surrounded by a complete mystical mess. I don't really like to do labels in life, but I probably would be in denial to think that I didn't have farting tendencies. My name is Johnny. I am a very close friend of Darlene's. That house has really taken over her entire life. She's living outside, outside. I'm Michaela and Darlene is my third cousin. It's not safe. There's an alley right behind her. She's the perfect victim. She's wild animals walking through her bed. She has strange men walking through her backyard. There's no security. There's, you know, weather. My fear is the safety of Darlene. I've been feeling so much like a prisoner inside the house. It's actually kind of fun. It's like my little adult, like, fort tent thing. So when Granny started getting sick in her old age, Darlene was one of the only people that started caring for her granny. Darlene is just automatic like that. Granny wanted to die at home. Since that was like her dying wish, then I gave up my film career for two years to like take care of her 24 seven. My grandmother loved this house so much. She put so much into it. She had 200 roses in the front yard. People would come from all over to see this but it was always like neat and organized. And she kept everything in immaculate condition. I would never have thought the word hoarder would be applied to her, but she did have a lot of stuff. Granny's house was a tidy, chaotic, 
organized mess. And with Darlene, it's slowly just built up, built up, built up. I just felt so bullied, you know? So that franticness and my inability to make decisions. Darlene, cleaning rags for you. Equals this. <laughs> yeah, you keep out of my drawers. I worked and paid for everything myself. It is all personal property. Oh, Granny, you're so cute. <laughs> it's just a very beautiful, powerful process, you know, and I'm glad that she didn't die alone. I think Darlene losing so many important figures in her life has got her in a lost space. After Granny's passing, Darlene kind of just let everything go. I've been asking for support for years with this clutter fest. I'm tired of being a lone ranger having to do everything by myself all the time. She has a lot of friends that come to go. It's not abandonment, but it seems like it is to Darlene. I need a breakthrough. All the weight and the heaviness of this is like just so suffocating. My biggest fear for Darlene is that she just dies inside that house with all her stuff. Or a bunch of falls on her. I just can't stand knowing that she's outside. Being out on a patio in the winter, it's dangerous. Everything in there right now is dangerous. I actually have driven out there to make sure she's still alive. My name is Julio Rivera. I'm a professional organizer who specializes in hoarding cleanups. My goal this morning is to get the ball rolling by getting her to make a decision about any items. Got some things that were brought out. Yeah. If you want to start taking a look well, at it. This is what I've been doing my whole life for the last month. So okay. if you wanna... I don't know what to do with it more than it already is. Can you tell me a little bit about what you were working on? <sighs> I'm trying to understand your thought pattern so that we can make some decisions. Seeing the stuff that was coming out from the front door, that totally threw her off. Are there boxes to put? Because I've already sorted these things. Um, boxes, I think there's some little ones here. Are there boxes or whatever? Like, here. I'm just not understanding. Julio, you're going to go get some boxes the and the colors. Yeah. Yeah. So, Darlene, why don't we just sit down for a quick uh, can minute? Can we just, I love working and talking. I hate sitting and okay. doing nothing. Uh, okay. I'm Sarah Ahmed. I'm a psychotherapist that specializes in problematic behaviors, including hoarding disorder. Do I have your attention? I yeah, feel like I, I don't. I, love, I have equal left, right, brain, hemisphere synchronization. Right. I can do, I like multitasking. It makes okay. me feel calmer and better. OK. So stop everything. Darlene's feeling very overwhelmed. It's really hard for me to connect with her. If she's not going to be real with me, we're not getting anywhere in this process. This is the first round of things that got brought out. Yep. Yes. And? What's coming up for you? What's coming up for you? I don't know. What's... Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What does support look like for you right now? Where are the boxes? The labels? boxes are coming. The <laughs> okay, boxes the, are coming. The, the, the colors are coming. Like. Perfect, I want perfect. to know what support looks like. Yeah, perfect. Because it sounds as though you don't feel supported right now. Here we go. Thank you. Sure. Darlene? This isn't helping. OK, so tell me, what would be helpful? I just want someone to frickin' tell me how to do this process. I don't want this conversation. I just want to be told the process. And I just want to know where the boxes and the labels. Darlene, we need to go I'm... through your things of what you want to keep and what you don't yeah, want to keep. Yeah, this is I've already organized. This is keep. You, this is you want to keep all this? Yes. I'm not understanding Darlene, what the Darlene. challenge is. This is. When she saw all her stuff on the lawn, I knew she was going to flip her shit. First, it's like, this stuff is car. I don't know where car is going. Garage. Oh, I Garage. don't know. See, I have no idea. So now what happens? Right. When she's challenged, she breaks down and needs support. How can we get past that? They've actually got a pretty good master plan, and you're in control. 
And it's, it's so beautiful. Is, yeah, you just, you know, beautiful. trust in the process. Not making any sense. Stuff just came out of the house, that's it. So maybe, can you explain to me? Maybe yeah, I can explain no it problem. to her. This is the color map. Like, I'm not understanding. Okay, so what like, what am I missing? What am I missing, Paul? You're not missing. Paul? Some... You're not You're missing. Not missing any... You're it was not... a bit challenging to help her understand the sorting process. This is all here. Yeah. Once you say where everything goes, then it goes down into the basement in color-coded places. Obviously, this is brilliant. I just wanted it explained to me. Brilliant. And they know what you're doing, okay. so let's let's take advantage of this okay, cool. and know that you're in complete control. And things started to move again. Are we good? Yeah, this yeah, is good. yeah. Thank you're, you. This is very helpful. Yeah, thank you for helps, showing right? me the vision. Now you know. Yeah. Right? Can we start bringing the stuff out? Sure. Yeah. Please. And then you and yeah. I yeah. 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 work through yeah. that process. Yeah. Yeah. I'll hold it up. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. This is exciting. There you go. Woo woo. This is a big deck, hey, Dara? Yeah. We're finally attacking the makeshift bedroom outdoors. Oh, oh, oh they have my, um, was it dark in there? This is a great step. Your, your life is getting lighter. Darlene, yeah. that was amazing. Oh. This is what I call a win. A win? Yes, yes, yes. This is a win? This is a big win. Really? For all of us. Oh, okay. Such a win. I just noticed the air I can feel. Yeah. Darlene, you're safer inside. Seriously. Mm. This is a moment of pure growth. Yes. And this is just the start. Do you feel Literally it? Literally just the start. No. You don't feel it? No. Oh. But okay. We'll I, feel I, it for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? She's no longer sleeping outside. So I'll take it. I need big bins. Good I definitely need a bunch more. Can I put blankets into the bin? Um, yes, yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. We need bins. I don't know. I just... I thought she'd be elated, but she just went back to stressing. Is everything OK? I would love to be able to find my grounding and be totally cool. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Yesterday, I got a bit of a better sense of what your process looked like, but it feels like today we've kind of reset. I'm trying to figure out what support looks like for you. <laughs> You're not doing anything wrong. I just don't know how you or anyone can help me. Like, I don't know. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to figure out, right? There's also been many priceless moments, like finally advocating for yourself, getting your support network to understand what your needs are. There's aftercare, and that's... Yeah, but there's one the aftercare that I'm not going to have is like how these wonderful, beautiful cleaners, and they're not going to be here. My friends are not going to be continuing to be here to support and help. And when you say you, you're not going to have anybody, you know, Darlene, I know right off the bat, three people, Paul, Michaela, and Johnny. Well, they're not going to come back and help me continue with this. This is ridiculous. And after how, uh, how abrupt I am, why would anyone want to help me? I'm not like the most fun person to work with. Of course they're going to help you. They understand that you've been through a lot. And regardless of what happens, they're still there. Why would they continue? <laughs> they, like... Because they love you, darling. <laughs> That's something I've witnessed. They continue to show up for you. And they love you very, very deeply. Wow, this journey was far harder than anything I could have imagined. So we did have quite a few big wins. The most important thing was to get her off that balcony, and we accomplished that. I can't wait for you to see the couch. Yeah. It's gonna be so exciting. It is uh, a real opportunity for her 
This is just the start of the rest of her life. Whoa. Oh. No! Oh my, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love those shelves. Oh, oh and, and the piano fits. So flabbergasted. The way everybody put it together, I just couldn't even believe it. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, so then bed. they can pull out. <gasps> right there. Oh that turns into a bed. I like it? Oh, oh my goodness. Not it's the right so material good. or what, huh? Oh, my gosh. I need to use my pillows. Ah! <gasps> Ooh. What? Oh, yeah. my, oh my gosh. Oh. It's like, <gasps> oh, my gosh. Right you through. have a bed oh. inside the house. Like, wow. What it feels like. Oh, my. You got to actually walk around the bed. And I don't even think she knows what that's like. There's so much room on this side. And that side, and that side. Oh, this feels good, too. Oh, my this God. Feels yes. good. What? Wow. Like, completely. Yeah. I am blown yeah. away. Oh! Oh, 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 I love oh, that. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. You guys what? did an amazing job, Julio. Our like, favorite people. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Is that you. a smile oh. I see? So when she came out, she seemed super happy, and that was a wave of relief. Oh, and it's not a bedroom anymore. Oh, the bedroom's like... gone. This has truly been one of the most challenging projects I've ever worked on. And to see Darlene express gratitude and look so happy makes it all worth it. It is extremely important for Darlene to engage in the aftercare provided to continue making progress with this house. You know, we do have to acknowledge there's still a lot of work to be done, but yeah. you've already started. That's mm. the hardest part. Yeah. Because it's organized, this doesn't feel crazy anymore. It wasn't crazy. Oh. Sometimes we all end up in places mm -hmm. that we need a little help to come back from. Is there anything else, Darlene, that we could support you with? Yeah, the way Granny did her, the, her organization was like beautiful and it wasn't this insanity that my house became. So I just want to honor that and <laughs> her. And I feel like these boxes or bins are under control, but the ones outside, I want to like make my peace with and release it. Can we do it as a community? Yes, please, please. Oh. Go team. Having all the love and the support of everyone here. It is such an invitation to like step into this new reality. I feel so liberated and I feel like new possibilities, like a real fresh start. My name is Jake, I'm 21 and I'm unemployed. I don't actually intend to collect anything. Pretty much whatever comes in my house doesn't leave. Food wrappers, bottles, cans, any kind of garbage, really. My name is Joe, and I'm Jake's mom. I don't understand it. I think that, that that's what that's how it began. Just all this stuff started piling up and it got to the point where it's too much. Every single object has a meaning behind it. Say my mom buys me a water bottle. I feel like if I throw the water bottle away that I'm saying I don't love my mother. I can go in his room and see everything I've ever brought over. It's there. The reason there's so much dog hair in the house is because I feel like if I throw away the dog hair that I'm going to speed up my dog's aging. And I know how insane that is, but I feel like I'm killing her by doing it. I don't even try anymore. I used to. I used to manage it somehow, but it's such bull when you can lose something within a one foot vicinity of you and you actually have to look for it. It just has gotten so much worse. My name is Franklin, and I am Jake's boyfriend. My name's Terry. I'm Jake's dad. Jake and I live in, actually, it's hard for me to just say this, but um, Jake and I live pretty much in a garbage dump. 
I honestly think that the house, it's a, it's a two person act. Everything upstairs is all Jake and everything downstairs is all Terry. It's just, I mean, when they first moved in, it was a regular apartment and um, now it's just a junkie. There are hundreds of bottles on the floor and that's just for six months. But I've been piling them up for years. I just don't take them out. I don't care. I mean, my dad is definitely an alcoholic. Absolutely, no doubt. I don't want to say it makes my situation any worse, but it certainly makes it harder to focus on my own problems. He's such a good kid. He'd never hurt anybody, and he's, and he's, it's just sad that he has this disorder, whatever it is. It breaks my heart. I want things to work for him. That's so. all. They just spend their entire lives taking care of me and making sure I'm okay and I'm 21. And... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm 21, I'm supposed to be out having fun, <laughs> graduating college and all that, but I can't even take care of my own hygiene. Hi, it's Tara. Hi, I'm Dr. Tara Fields. I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I work with people who have OCD, hoarding disorders, and then many other things. He wants to talk to you alone. Okay. But I want to give you a warning. He's extremely drunk. Right now. All right, I'm going to go talk to him. All right. Terry, I hear you want to talk to me. I'm Tara. Well, I'll be quite honest. I don't trust you guys. You know, I, I mean, I have to, you're, you're bringing up something, and I can smell you've been drinking. Yes, I've been drinking, so I. So what? Well, What's that got to do with anything? Point. Are you being a hole? Why well, is that a problem? It, I, what I see is Jake's getting very agitated. Jake's getting agitated because I'm giving you a hard time. That's all I'm that is. I'm getting agitated because you're not being rational right now. It's, just, it's, it's frustrating that you are just sitting on the grass and drinking all day. And do you, know, do you know what it's like to see someone you care about doing that to themselves? Do you have any clue what it's like to see that? I have to stand back also because... Okay, the, you don't the, like the smell. You know what? I, I don't, don't care what you like. Mm -hmm. You got here five minutes ago. What do you know about him? You um, know nothing. Dad, do not get in her face. No, you know what? It's it's okay. Do you do you want me to be a part of this? I do. It's just... Okay, and here's what I want to reassure you about, and your dad can choose to listen or not, is that you're going to be in control. Anything you don't want to do, you just tell me, so you have all the control. I, can, I promise I you. I can actually just leave. Is that okay? I am so. No, okay no, with you that. have all Jake the power. Jake wants me to leave. Okay. Do you, you want? Do you want her to be here? Yes, I do. Okay, I want her to be here too for you, but I don't have to be here with her. You don't have to. Absolutely. She's the here same... for you. She's That's not right. here for me. That's right. Let's continue and see the home. All right. Bye, Dad. Trust the words she says. Dad, yeah. shut the f up. It's okay. It's okay. What? What? What's? Up. You know what? It is. You're absolutely right. It is. You're absolutely right. So you've got two battles going on. Your dad did have a point. You don't know me. It takes time to build trust. So whatever you need from me to feel safe with me, you tell me. Okay. The anxiety is pretty high right now. It's really weird seeing a bunch of people you don't know putting on face masks about to go in your house. Yeah. It's a, an interesting situation, to say the least. So what's the feeling that's coming up now? I'm just scared. OK. And, and what are you afraid of? Just like how. So rate your anxiety for me. Where is it on a scale of 1 to 10? 
It's definitely breathing. like a solid eight right now. It, okay. it keeps like going up and down because I keep considering different outcomes. And I'm really clear that we don't want it to get to a level nine because we know level 10 is too much for him to handle. So if I can really convince him that anything below a nine, if, if it's an eight, if it's seven, if it's heart's beating, that he can actually manage that. Okay, this is what I need to hear to help you. Tell me what that voice is saying when it's it's talking about the outcomes because this is, this is how you, you freeze yourself, how you get that brain lock, is that you start jumping ahead too far, and how's it gonna turn out? Don't jump ahead, okay? Don't jump ahead, stay in the moment. Right now you're outside. So the liquor bottles are all here. Um, these or liquor bottles. All under that table, this entire closet's full of bags full of liquor bottles. I see there's about a thousand wine bottles downstairs. Um, that's not my doing. That's my father's doing. Is this all one? No, it's not. Oh my God. I never knew this was down here. This is like the beginning of it. Terry Greenland. <laughs> Jake. What? Are you kidding me? No. How does it feel? It feels good, but it's really disturbing to see how much. Mm -hmm. You did it. Ooh, you did it, you did it, you did it, you did it, you did it. Okay. It's just so up like Okay. The like evidence of what he's done to himself. It was abstract before, but now it's like solid and contained yep. in it. Yep. It stinks. I mean I can smell the liquor, I can smell the filth. And then I can only imagine what it was like when the drinking was going on. Um, this is garbage, but I have a really hard time accepting that. I just, I just think like this is so many memories. And I... mm -hmm. But you know what? The more you find out that you can tolerate this, the better it's gonna be. Okay, where are we now? Look at the eight. Okay, so where do you feel it in your body? Everywhere, my whole body's just hurt. No, I wanna know specifically, where do you feel my it? My head feels like it's about to explode. Okay. It's what like else? this intense pounding. My mouth is going dry. My uh -huh. my arms are getting weak. Okay. It's just like you I used anything? to play this game all the time when I was a kid. I know, I, and you don't now. And I really I get that. And what's the worst thing that would happen if you threw it out? What what what's the worst thing that could happen? Realistically, yeah. nothing. Right. This stuff is just a lie. Then I'll never be able to play it again. Right. But and I don't you, think, I mean, look at that, it's cracked. It's Yeah, and if you never play it again, then what? Why is that so awful? Oh, yeah, in the garbage, in the garbage. <laughs> Amazing, I'm Amazing. Sorry. I'm just gonna do this as fast as I can before I change my mind and decide I don't wanna do this because, okay. Getting rid of the dog hair is definitely gonna be the hardest thing for me. To make my dog's life better, I have to do something that my brain tells me is killing my dog. <laughs> I just want her, the last couple years of her life, to be the best year she's ever had because I owe it to her. If there's one thing that'll take, seriously just take me down, this. So this is the final hurdle. You are so close, so close to what you said you wanted days ago when I first met you, which is clear slate. And a clear slate, you can write anything you want on it.
<laughs> so let's let's start. If you can do this, clear this up. That's graduation. Really? <laughs> that's graduation. It's like I'm doing it for her, you know. I and you just don't want her to live in a bad situation anymore. Yeah, that shows how much you love her. <laughs> it shows how brave you are. That's love. I love her so much. This is helping her breathing. This is helping my breathing. Oh my God. <laughs> You're right. This is all bull. This is all total bull. You are amazing. This is all such bull. I can't even. This, this is my dog. It's dead. This is dead hair. It's nothing. I'm so down with doing this right now. I'm so okay right now. Mm -hmm. I'm so okay right now. I mean, I'm not, but I'm okay. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. What Jake achieved was phenomenal, and it was huge progress forward. But I, as I say, when I work with addicts, you know, all addicts have a big support system that allows them to continue their behavior. You know, the other, the other people sort of in this, this play that's his life haven't been around. My dad's gonna flip out, probably. Um, even though this is all beneficial to him even, um, he doesn't want it happening. He would prefer to stay in the mess, I think. Hi, thanks for being a fan of Hoarders. And subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.